Hello, everybody. My name is Roxas. And I'm Sokio. And welcome back to our frame. So, Ivara, how to? Ivara. How do you do this one? Wow. She's a jellyfish. She is a jellyfish. <laughs> I love that. So, in the star chart, how do you obtain Ivara is any spy mission. If you have any spy mission, my sources say that any spy mission from levels 1 to 15 will drop the systems of Ivara. Any mission from level 16 to 25 will drop the chassis. And level 26 positive will drop the neuroptics and the main blueprint. So a 50-50 chance there to get either part. Now starting at level 1, you can work at something like... There is one here on this planet somewhere. It's by the junction. It's by the junction. Ah, so Camria, this would drop your systems. Any other system as well, well along the way, going through Venus, Mercury, and then start working your way up toward the kind of higher levels. So this is 14. There is a 15. So maybe on Phobos would be a spy mission. Nope. We got to go further. Let's see here. We need at least 15 and above. There's 24 and 22 and 24, which is Bode on series. Bode, Bode, ah. Okay, that's still really low level, so we got to keep on going. You can see where this oh, is nightmare. going. Let's see here. Where is another spy? So there's, there's another spy here on Jupiter. So this would probably be your next farming spot, and this would be for the chassis. And you could be able to get the chassis from there. And then if you wanted to, all the way to Sedna, there is going to be another spy. I believe it's Kappa. Kappa? Nope. It's not Kappa. They renamed it. Where is it? it ah! Is... It's right here. It's Kelpie. Spy. Level 35 to 40. So that would also drop your neuroptics and your main blueprint. So she is basically dropped by spy missions. I really wouldn't use her primarily for spy missions most of the time when i'm doing spy missions i don't even use a stealth warfarin to be blatantly uh clear with that i don't use one uh you could use loki you could use ivara which her specialty is straight up going through barriers with a, the infiltrate mod and or you could use ash i don't use any of them i straight up just go with whatever frame because a lot of the time Having a stealth just kind of incapacitates you versus being able to pay attention to your surroundings and get through the spy missions. The hardest spy missions to date that I would have to claim are the higher hardest spy missions is going to be, I would have to say, number one on Lua, uh, the Palov. This is a very hard spy mission. If you're going to do this, be prepared for a long, hard duel with the Orican systems there, that is a very hard one to be able to do. Very tough. Another hard one is Pago as well here on the Kuva Fortress. The Kuva Fortress is a very hard spy mission. A lot of the time you get caught up in a lot of these traps. It's going to be a hard one to get through. So especially Sedna or anything before, even before that, where you can do a spy mission here on Pluto that's going to be easier for farming for her parts than trying to go to the Lua or the Kuva Fortress missions. I would not recommend those. Those are going to be very hard and especially trying to get her parts. That's just not going to be a very quick way of doing it. Any of the other spy missions, try to get as low level as you can just to be able to get her parts. And then from there, we go on to her abilities. Yeah. So Ivara is more so kind of stealth warframe. She doesn't really have a niche where she's really good. She might be able to be good toward the later game, toward just kind of survival and, you know, 200s plus, that could be. But I just kind of think she falls off. All right. So we got her passive here. She has basically an enemy sense. Sense is nearby enemies within 50 meters. Every Warframe has a loot radar and a enemy sense radar, which senses all loot crates within 30 meters and all enemy groups within 30 meters as well. So this just extends 
Ivara's base passive of her enemy sense, which would be at 30 meters. And it basically extends it until the 50 meter point, adding another 20 meters onto her enemy radar, which you might think, oh, that's not useful. Well, it is. It adds quite a bit of range so you're able to actually hierarchy and oversee a whole bunch of enemies and enemy movements and gives you more info on where those enemies are at. So that is really actually pretty useful. Uh, to say how useful, not so much, especially because any of your companions they will automatically have on them primed animal instinct or basic animal instinct as well, which adds basically her passive, which is another bonus 20 meters of enemy radar, which any frame can be able to utilize on that sentience. So how useful is this? It's pretty useful, but not useful. And yeah, it is what it is. It it does increase the range, though, so that is pretty useful for that. Quiver. Cycle through and shoot one of four tactical arrows. Cloak creates a stationary bubble that cloaks Ivara's and allies, or Ivara and allies. Bubble radius for that is 2.5 meters, so you could think half of the area of a snow globe, so it's, it's a kind of tiny bubble. It's not very big. Bubble duration is 12 seconds, so it doesn't last very long. 12 seconds is pretty short. Um, with this, though, you can pop down and keep on just like uh, Frost's snow globe. You can have up to three of those available at any time. So that's pretty easy to be able to just keep on popping three of those down. Ivara creates a dash wire that has a traversable zip line. So she basically makes a zip line. This pretty much has indefinite range with any tile you're going to be able to tell it's like i can just pretty much zip line around the environment especially above defense missions we always used to love to just put a whole bunch of zip lines down and just play around with our zip line it was such a fun <laughs> ability it still is i love that to be able to just throw out a whole bunch of zip lines those are fun so that's just a fun little ability there. No real range or anything with that. It's just that you create a zip line in midair and you're able to just kind of play around with it. It's real fun. Uh, noise emission as well. She creates a noise emission with a high pitch sound that attracts nearby enemies to it. They're like, what? What's over there? Oh, and they all just start crowding in, coming toward this epicenter of that, that noise where you created that noise so if you think about it almost it's like you took a pedal bowl and you threw it out there and tuck, 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 and then all the guards are just like huh and they get drawn into that that uh rock and they're just all staring at that rock so that's really really funny so the no noise radius for this is 20 meters so that when you pop down that everyone just kind of goes toward that epicenter so that's really really nice and she also does a sleep Sleep temporarily puts an em nearby enemies into a deep slumber. Sleep radius is six meters, and the sleep duration for this is 10 seconds. Now, this is basically the same thing as Equinox's rest. There is two differences here. The sleep radius is negated by one meter on the base. So this is something that's interesting. Instead of having a full six meters, you're now having five meters. So you negate one range, but your sleep duration is more than halved. Equinoxes is at 22 seconds at a base. This is at 10 seconds. So this is something where this doesn't last very long. It just sleeps them for a little duration and then they just wake up. So that doesn't do as well as you would really think it does. Um, with the zip lines though, I forgot to mention, there is four zip lines that you can have active at one point in time. As soon as you go beyond the fourth zip line, the first zip line will decast and you'll be able to cast the next one. So you can only have four zip lines open at one point in time. And for the sleep targets, if you do sleep your target and you get it below half health with a pretty bad weapon and because your weapon doesn't do a lot of damage that what that enemy will wake up from that sleep so definitely make sure that you don't try to wake them up with a pretty poor weapon navigator assume control of any projectile launched by any of your weapons whether this be your ultimate whether it be a primary or secondary you can control at least one of your projectiles and guide it to the target Drain is 25 energy on cast, and drain per second is 3 energy. This does, I believe, increase 
when you have it active for more time. Um, damage multiplier is a five times damage multiplier. This is affected by ability strength, and this is actually capped. Okay, so if you have on a base five times damage multiplier, your multiplier growth is per second. You can grow every second that you have navigator on one times damage. As soon as you get to five seconds at a five times damage multiplier, you've capped it because the damage multiplier maximum is five times. If you increase that with power strength, it'll grow up until that maximum cap point. And if you increase duration, it'll increase the multiplier growth, which will basically make sure that you have more damage available faster and quicker so that you don't have to wait so long for that damage to come off. So this is not all that useful. I really don't use it, especially with Warframe. You are killing hordes of enemies. You're not really just focused on one. This can be useful though, especially with an assassination type target or something like that, or a priority target where you don't want them to see you, especially like capture target. You could use this and just kind of shoot your arrow around the corner. They don't even see you. And then as soon as your arrow hits them, it just makes contact and kills them. But overall, this really isn't all that useful. Prowl. Become invisible and steal loot from unsuspecting enemies. Take out prey with deadly headshots. Drain is 25 energy. Drain per second is 1 energy per second. Range is 4 meters. This is your steal range, how far away you can be from them and still steal. Extra loot is 100%. Steal time is two and a half seconds. So as soon as you're within range, a little aura will pop up on that enemy and it will select that enemy. And then for two and a half seconds, you have to wait and you'll start to pickpocket that unit. As soon as the two and a half second duration is up, you will obtain any drops that might actually occur. Headshot damage is when Prowl is active. So if you get any headshots on somebody, this will do 40% increased damage. This is also applied by power strength. Adding more power strength will deal more on your headshots. So that's really, really nice. One thing that they didn't mention here is that while you are cloaked, you're not cloaked like Loki or Ash, where you have 100% movement speed. Your movement speed is effectively halved. So you are very, very slow when doing any of your movements. So that is kind of sucky because if we want to be doing any spy mission, we want to be moving through in and out of that spy mission quickly and not taking a lot of our time. And Ivara is taking a lot of time because she has negated movement speed. So Prowl, pretty useful, but not very useful. And a lot of the time, I don't even use a stealth frame, like I say. So it's you might think it might be useful for spy missions, but I've had experience and I just say, nah. Artemis Bow. Summon a mighty bow and unleash a volley of devastating arrows. Drain is 50 energy, damage is 240 on a base, and multi-shot is 7 projectiles. Now, she actually pulls out her bow, and instead of like you would see like with an Olympic art or anything, like putting 3 arrows on the string all at one time, she puts 7. So this is really cool. She puts a full 7 arrows on her string all at the same time and if you quick fire she will fire a vertical line of arrows in a vertical direction basically making all seven arrows make a vertical line when you hold it down then she changes that vertical orientation and she changes it to a horizontal orientation this is very unique because the way you can actually take down enemies so if you do a quick fire you can think about it as I'm just taking out one unit. I want to be able to hit one unit multiple times and I can proc multiple statuses effects. So you can just quick fire and just hit one unit in a line. And this just deals a ton of damage to one unit. If you want to hit a whole bunch of units, you can hold and hit that vertical or the horizontal line to be able to hit a whole bunch of enemies all in a row or all down a hallway kind of spread out and that's where you can actually hit a whole bunch of different enemies one thing to note too that they didn't say here is there is a charge of 15 energy per shot every time that you shoot the bow so it actually does cost quite a bit of energy to be able to actually passively keep on shooting that bow so something that's just kind of uh, that takes a lot of energy but yes
All right. Shall we take a look at the build? We shall. All righty. So now we actually have two builds here. We have walk speed and we have spy looter. I'm going to go over spy looter first because this is kind of more of an interesting one. So this one, we are actually looking at our prowl for loot range. And also, we are also looking at the noise radius on our noise quiver. So like I said, the guards hear that noise, they all get distracted and they all get pulled into that one area. This is very useful for Cephalon Samaris because if we have any targets that, hey, we need to be able to scan a whole bunch of things, get our affinity for today, and we need to keep, be able to be invisible and get our maximum because if you're invisible while all these targets are coming into the area, they don't know you're there. And when you scan for Cephalon Samaris, you'll get a huge amount of uh, standing for Cephalon Samaris. So being unaware of where you are and being able to scan those units, you get a ton of affinity for Cephalon Samaris. This is primarily how I got a lot of my affinity for Cephalon Samaris. So I'm not taking a whole lot of time to be able to get a part back like if I accidentally sold some of Chromo's parts or some of Titania's parts. And I need to get those things back I can easily get standing for him just by hitting noise in an area, making sure no one sees me via using cloak, and being able to just scan a whole bunch of enemies. You'll get a ton of affinity very quickly. Now, this is all based upon range and pretty much duration. So for this build, if I was going to do a full build, I would uh, recommend Steel Charge as per usual instead of any other uh, aura. Then for my secondary, I would be using Prime Sure Footed. If you haven't seen, go ahead and go see Prime Sure Footed from Trinity. It's just nice not to get knocked down when you get knocked down. Arcane Energize for a whole bunch of energy. More duration for basically just steel times, making sure that our steel times are down. It's very nice if our steel times are down so that we can just steal peep people's uh, energy orbs or any other loot that they might be holding on to. That's very nice to have quicker steal times. We'll be using Primed Flow for maximum battery here. We'll also be using Infiltrate because this adds bonus movement speed on a base. This is really nice so that you're not going at half speed anymore. It's going to be increasing your speed even by a little bit is very nice because then you're not just standing around all the time. Fleeting expertise for added ability efficiency along with streamline for maximized ability efficiency at 75%. We are going to be using narrow-minded here and primed continuancy, but for narrow-minded, this is very nice because then our steal times are down to 1.23 seconds. This makes it so that we can steal things very, very quickly, but we also need range. So we're going to be going overextended for 90% added ability range so that we don't have to get nice and tight like glue to people and accidentally proc them aware of this and or get us ourselves into trouble where we're trying to get affinity and trying to get our energy up at the same time. We just kind of want the both of both worlds. We don't want to be sticking around too long for anything else. Our main priority here is just to be able to get those targets and not to make them aware of us. We want to be able to stay a pretty good distance away. So this is why that range is that far away. We will be adding on vitality for more maximum health, both durations for more duration, just to negate steal time, also to make our, uh, our drain per second to be very, very efficient. But mainly we don't need a whole bunch of range. Uh, 20 meters, around 20 meters is enough range, which we have 25 here, to be able to pull in a good group of enemies and be able to just scan a whole bunch of them. But other than that, that's pretty much all that this build is, is just basically Syndicate Standing Farm for Cephalon Samaris. Um, you could swap out if you need more range. You could swap out Infiltrate for Stretch. That is something that you could do because all that we're getting here for speed is a 9%. But I do like my speed. It is pretty nice to get more speed. We do negate that speed with Ability Strength here but we do need that range to be able to get a whole bunch of crowded people in. And we also need more range 
for our passive steel just to be able to keep our energy up here. Walk speed. Now this is the main one that I would be using for just kind of walking around doing spy missions or anything else. This is a pretty good overall all around build. We have a corrosive projection here, but we could be using again, steel charge if you wanted to for your Artemis bow, because this would be a more Artemis bow type build. We could actually be using our, where is it? Rifle amp. So we could actually be using rifle amp. This would also up our Artemis bow damage. So you could be using this as well, or a flip flop between them, just depending on if you're going to be using a knife at all, if you're going to be using your sleep arrow. So that could be useful there. We're going to be using prime sure footed in our secondary elixir slot. This should make sure that you just don't get knocked down. Molt efficiency as well for just extra steel times. If you don't want this and you go, Hey, I want some more increased movement speed because that is increased by power strength as well. Artemis bows damage is also increased by power strength. There are some other arcanes out there that do increase power strength and therefore would increase your base movement speed so that you're not just moving at a very slow slug spate speed because it's nice to go around quickly throughout the environment and not just take our time with it. And then of course, increasing our Artemis bow damage. So there are other arcanes other than multi efficiency, but multi efficiency is what I just have. Now we have primed flow for maximum battery umbral intensify. This is going to increase our Artemis bow damage and our prowl speed. This is going to be very good for both and umbral vitality. So we just don't get killed. And also this buffs umbral vitality from 44 to 55% and umbral vitality increases umbral vitality. Uh, umbral intensify increases umbral vitality by 30% from a hundred. So they both do very good. Um, I would not be using any other strength mods. If you're trying to get more strength to increase prowls speed, or you're trying to get more strength to increase Artemis's bows damage, both of these mods are going to be bad because they're going to negate your ability duration, making it so that your steel times take longer and blind rage is going to take out your efficiency. So you can't stay invisible. So both of those are going to be bad. This is pretty much going to be it for your power strength here. If you're going to add on more power strength, I would definitely suggest some Archon shards for power strength here or adding on a different arcane for more power strength increase. So we have our efficiencies. We have our umbral mods. We have prime flow for maximum battery. Again, we are going to be adding more duration. Now, narrow minded isn't something that you actually need here. You could actually be adding on something like stretch where my stretch went. I don't know. There is stretch. Hello, stretch. So you could actually be adding on something like stretch instead of narrow minded so that your steel range is still at one. You only need 150% to be able to get your drain per second from one to a quarter. If you take off narrow minded, there is not a whole lot of change. Um, ooh. Ooh, maybe there is some change there. So maybe that is higher than 100%. So that is something interesting to know. But narrow minded does take that duration drain per second down to 0.33. Let's see here. Oh, I know why. I know why. It's because this also affects ability efficiency as well. But I believe you only need 55%. Oh, you only need it at one. That's why. So, so if I actually take this, this is negative 50%. The 25% is at 100%, but I need a prime continuancy, not, not the basic continuancy. So there's that. You only need 100%. So you only need this. So you could add on range, but uh, again, it's disputable. It depends on what you really need. Um, it is nice though to have full steel range. So you could actually put on stretch right there. So that would be interesting. Put on my, put on my duration back on again. It is nice though, especially for steel times to have a uh, full narrow minded. I actually had continuancy on here because I can't put on primed continuancy. So there is that, but yeah, it is nice to have your 
your range back up because then you're not having to stick like glue to somebody to get your uh, energy back. But this is what it is because we don't really have anything else for duration. You could be though, although you could be spending your red Archon Shards instead of strength, you could actually be putting them onto duration so that you have faster steal times and you could actually be adding on range or stretch so that you could actually steal a lot faster. But for those of you that actually want a power strength build, you could be going narrow-minded, negate the range, don't care about the range, and then be going full power strength. If it were me, I would kind of want a duality of both worlds kind of doing a duality build i might actually go stretch and then go full duration on here because then your your range would be pretty good for your loot and then also your duration would be really good so that your steel time gets negated because that's actually what is it negating your steel time is duration how fast you're able to go in their pocket pick their pocket and pull loot out so yeah that's pretty much the build. Should we go ahead and try it out? Yeah. Alrighty. Oh, we forgot. Oh. She has an exalted weapon. She does. Yeah. So here, we actually haven't done a primed, uh, uh, primary exalted weapon yet. So this is a pretty basic one. Um, I would not be adding on heavy caliber for this. I'd be adding on Galvanized Chamber for multi-shot, Serration for damage. With uh, Galvanized Chamber, it's the same thing as Split Chamber, but uh, Galvanized Chamber, Chamber adds on more multi-shot. Primed Cryo Rounds and Malignant Force to make uh, Viral. This is very, very good for the Artemis Bow because it does have, on a base, 7 multi-shot. So this is going to be able to proc Viral very, very quickly on a target, giving you a 4.2 to 5 times multiplier. This is very good because this will be able to kill crowds very, very quickly. With speed trigger, I would not really go speed trigger. I really wouldn't go the other one as well. I think it's the fire rate one. I wouldn't go violet acceleration either. This does negate some of your damage. It does add more speed, so that does overall do more damage. But you got to consider that per time that you're actually firing this weapon, you're using quite a bit of energy. You're using 15 energy per shot. So that is actually kind of annoying. So instead, I would actually recommend going Prime Shred because this adds 55% fire rate, so that's pretty good fire rate. And then it also adds 2.2 with punch through so that each of your bolts going through can go through a target. And if there's a target behind them, they also get hit by that same projectile basically dealing additional viral damage. This is really useful for going through crowds because of that punch through. I would also go viral sense and critical delay to give you some more viral critical damage and some more critical chance. This is a pretty good critical chance on a base, 25%. So the crit on this weapon is actually pretty good. And then because you're proccing viral damage as well, go galvanized aptitude because per kill, you're getting added direct damage per status effect affecting the target. This doesn't have the greatest status chance, but this is what we've got for this build, and that would definitely add quite a bit of damage. But yes, eh. other than that, that's pretty much all I've got for Ivar, the jellyfish. Jellyfish. Well, should we go ahead and try it out? Yes. Alrighty. And I believe it's kelpie. Yeah. We're going to go swim with some kelp. Speaking of swimming, I have fishy around me. You have fish. I have fishy. I believe I have fish too. I do. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> this one is fun. I mean, I, I only use Loki for that um, Kuva Fortress. The Kuva mission. Fortress? Yeah. Yeah. That's the only spy frame that I use. The <laughs> one where you have to go around the corner and there's those two drones and you have to time it perfectly catches me every single time in that Kuva Fortress. Yeah. Oh. Do you like some energy? Why, oh, yes. No. I have been spotted. 
Also, I do use uh, whatever the the augment is. Persephone? Perception? Uh, it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea how they say that either. It's just, man, that's a hard word to say. But I also use it for hacking as well. Ah, I have a bow. I have the Natarak. The OP bow. Yeah. I can use her bow, though. Hehe. <laughs> and take them out. Ah, if you well, crash. that's a tiny bubble. It is a very tiny bubble. It's a very bubble. tiny bubble. But we also have negative uh, range as well. Kuvalich. And it's a spy mission, so it's over very quickly. Yeah. But oh yeah, these are fun though. No, I jumped in the wrong one. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you cannot bullet jump with Prowl. Yeah, that's another thing, too. But I love, yeah, especially if you increase the strength for this type of a build, you'd be able to go almost full speed with her yeah but she is very slow i don't like that about her no that she gets negated speed at all i almost wish that the uh the speed on the base was flat and then uh like as soon as you cast it there's no movement speed penalty and then you had more movement speed when you gain that uh, infiltrator mod. Because that would make sense. She can move a little bit quicker. Yeah. Stab people. Stab people. Now this one, you can move through. I'm already in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you get them all? Yeah, you just have to activate that console. And then I can hit Persephone. I don't know how you say that word. Persephone. Alright. Oh, I just killed the eggs. <laughs> This is where I would like Loki. <laughs> yeah, just the slow movement. You have to roll every single time. This is why I wish it was at regular speed. I don't know why she gets the movement penalty for that. I don't know either. There we go. But yeah, usually I would just jump right in and I wouldn't even proc any alarms. None of that. Yeah. And it would be fine. Yeah. <laughs>
Alrighty. Woo! All right. Ooh, I got an infinity booster. I got a resource booster. Yeah. Do we get? We didn't get Ivara. No. 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 What? Well, what? Well, that is Ivara. That is the jellyfish. So I don't know really what her main, uh, her main goal is or what she really does. If she does anything, it's actually pretty poorly because of her negated movement speed and especially because of her Artemis bow. Her Artemis bow is pretty good, but when you're talking about a build that actually does damage or when it actually does something, this almost is kind of negative in that aspect, expect, except for the dash wires. The dash wires, I can say, are definite. Those are definitely fun. I just wish there was more play with her where she was she was more useful because of Artemis Bow. It doesn't feel fluid. It doesn't feel like it has any real use in her kit, and especially for the energy drain. It just takes out too much energy to actually do anything. I wish it was kind of like you cast the ability and you can just use it over and over without the energy drain negation on that. And then especially when you're passing your three, third ability, I wish that that didn't have any movement speed negations to it. When you're moving around in the environment, you want to be moving around at full speed and not have any slowness to yourself and... I really don't like that. I don't see the pull toward that at all. That to me is just like, okay, but why? But that is what it is. I do see her where maybe for some players, I can't get through a spy mission. I don't like spy missions and I can take some more time to try to understand a spy mission. And I get that she would be more of a spy mission type warframe where I can go through laser barriers or other things like that. But for me, I have absolutely no issues with doing most of the majority of spy missions. And like I said, the hardest spy missions out to date are going to be your Lua spy mission, trying to go through Palav here, and as well, the Kuva Fortress trying to go to Pagio. Um, both of these are exceptionally hard. I could see, especially though, for that one room inside the Kuva Fortress, you could just completely bypass the laser barriers there and she is very useful for that because of infiltrate even though her she has negative movement speed but other than that uh especially in the lua run area the lua one room you need to be moving you cannot just be standing there you can't be just uh standing kind of dumb there you have to move throughout the course and uh, she negates movement speed that doesn't do you a whole lot of good when you need to go from that one room to the next room in a very short amount of time and be able to get through the door before the door closes. She doesn't do very well at that, and that's a spy mission. So I don't know what to say there. That's not very good for her. That she has negated movement speed when you need to actually have movement speed within a spy, spy mission. So there, there is that. Uh... I don't know whether other uses she really has other than definitely that noise having it for Cephalon Samaris. If you need a whole bunch of scans and you need to scan a whole bunch of people, that's nice to put everyone at one spot point in place at one time and be able to pull out your scanner and just scan a whole bunch of them, getting a ton of affinity for Cephalon Samaris. But other than that, that's all I can think about for Ivara. She's a nice, beautiful little jellyfish and she likes to float around in the uh, in the ocean <laughs> with her with her jellyfish head well is that all the time we have for this episode unfortunately yes yes and we will see you guys in the very next video bye 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 bye